Yeah, over in WA, Tom, it's pretty cool what they're doing. It ends this month, but they're pretty much doing a uh, voluntary give your gun to the government in exchange for money kind of program. Right. So 20,000 guns have been given to the WA government during the first five months of the buyback program and people are receiving $1,000 if they hand their gun into police. Is this just to try and get less guns yeah, out there? Yeah, to minimize yeah. gun, just gun safety overall and, you know, harmful impacts of it. So it's worked out really well and it's something that maybe we should consider down here. Absolutely. Over to celebrity news. Uh, there's a bunch of celebrities endorsing a new drug um, called NAD and pretty much mm. it mimics the molecule that the body produces to help create and protect DNA. So this could be the cure to long-lasting life and living for a little bit longer, looking a bit healthier. Uh, there's a bit of scepticism around it, but Joe Rogan, Hayley Bieber and all of those people are supporting it. Yeah, Kim K, I saw on it as yeah, well. Huge amount of people there, but it does cost for an IV treatment. This is where the celebrity aspect comes into right. it. Right, uh, uh, you know, it costs heaps of money. Well, your regular it? people aren't going to do it because it costs, you know, five hundred to $2,000 to just get an IV drip treatment and, you know, you have to do that ongoingly. I'm sure there's plenty of more natural things you can do, like, you know, eat fruit. Have a juice. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Go to the servo. Keep you looking a, young. Get a nippies. <laughs> <laughs> and back to SA News. Uh, if you've ever thought about owning an island and you see it on the internet and it's always something in Greece that's really expensive, there's actually... A few islands are for sale in the South Australia Coorong. Oh, really? Yep, so we got Mundu Island Station, which is three islands, heaps of animals there, wildlife, but they're up for sale. So if you want to own an island, we've officially got three in SA that you can purchase. How good is that? Hey, Callum, over to some quick sporting news, just touching on the Olympics. Another gold medal for Australia last night Ooh. puts us into third spot Jeez, in the medal tally. we're killing it. And we always do. Aussies always now the Olympics, but yeah, we're doing all right. For a low, for a much lower population than China, who's in first, and United States in second. Huge. Doing okay. Yeah, we're doing all right. Callum, I've kept this pretty dark because mm. it's just so dumb. Embarrassing. It, embarrassing. Yeah. yeah, stupid, silly. Call it what you will. That's it, why I've kept it to myself for so long. What a weird job, isn't it? You know, we keep these embarrassing things to ourselves and then you run dry on content and you think, well, I'll bring it to the <laughs> airwaves. <laughs> I'll tell everyone about it. So, yeah, what happened was a couple of weeks ago, I was uh, coming home from a mate's place and I had my sonnies just sort of dangling on my shirt, yeah. right? And I've had them for a couple of years, so the arms are a bit loose. So sometimes they do, you know, if I lean over, they'll just open up and fall sure. off. Yeah. And they're also like, they're pretty expensive sunnies. So they 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 have a prescription in them as well. So with that, and then they're just, they're just Ray-Bans, but with the prescription, I think they cost about $400. They get up there. Sunglasses, especially a nice pair, you know, easily can crack that 500 mark. Yeah. So I was getting out the car and... I must have, as I got out, they must have fallen off and I didn't realise. Next morning, driving off to work and come back thinking, where are my sonnies? I swear I brought them home last night. Mm. Looking everywhere and I thought, I'll have a look in the curb just in case. So there was a little bit of an inkling. There was something, a uh, sixth sense that, hey, maybe they could be out there. It was the last resort I looked at, right? I checked work, I checked home, and sure. I just didn't know where they could be. And I thought, well, they're loose. Maybe they fell off. Maybe they're still in the curb. Went outside, had a look at the curb right in front of my house, and I see uh, one of the shades. And I think, oh, you beauty. Here they are. Mm. Go to pick it up. It's broken in half. Crumbled. There's a tyre tread on it. <laughs> I've run over my sonnies <laughs> and no completely good. snapped them. <laughs> Jeez, running over the sonnies. For, well, and what were they? Four hundred and fifty or something bucks. Yeah, four to five hundred dollars. Unreal. I think. Yeah, I've had them for a couple of years. Probably due for a new pair. Uh, or you're trying and, to get an insurance claim out of it. <laughs> <laughs> I got a new prescription anyway, so you know maybe it's maybe it's a bit of a blessing in disguise. Who knows? It's one of those you know just real niche things, and you you didn't hear it crumble or anything when you drove off. No. <laughs> <laughs> They're just a pair of sunnies. <laughs> I didn't feel anything. There are or big hear goggles. Anything. Yeah, that's a and, and it's a niche one. It's like it's a bit. You know, I'm sure it happens though that people do run over odd things here and there. You know, prized possessions that happen to roll between the back of the tires. Look, I don't want to be alone on this one. Fresh fam, text in. What did you run over? Maybe mm. it was your kid's favourite toy. Maybe it was a water bottle. Yeah, could be anything. Could it be a pair of sunnies and that'll make you feel better? I'm, <laughs> I'm sure you're really hoping for someone to call up and be like, hey. <laughs> I've, I've run over sunnies I've as done well. the sunnies before, <laughs> multiple pairs. <laughs> but hey, let's have a look at the text. I uh, got a text here. 
Also embarrassing, I ran over a witch's hat by some roadworks. All the tradies staring at me in disbelief. Wow, yeah, it's an awkward one when you've got the whole pack of tradies, everyone staring at you, all eyes on you. Have this one here. Had the towers up on the line on a pretty windy day. As I was pulling out on the driveway, my husband's towel flew off and I ran right over it. <laughs> I rewashed it and never told him, but I can still see the black line going across it where I drove over it. I love that. Is it a family heirloom towel? What's so special about the towel? Get a new towel. <laughs> Another text here. Did a reverse run over when I left my open Fuick on the roof of my car, went everywhere and had to stop at the car wash on the way to the site. Jeez, that's a big one. I feel like that's another huge one, leaving something on top of the car. Yeah. <laughs> I feel like we have to conquer that next. Uh, another text just came through as well. During the summer, a couple of years back, we'd been at the pool and the kid's pool noodle fell out of the boot and I reversed over them. Huge God, one. you'd be so sad if you were that kid, hey? Big time. It's, that's, the, that's the equivalent of running over your kid's toy. Yeah. You know? <laughs> yeah, the pool noodle. Hey, Let's head over to Shido Park. We got Jackson on the line. Jacko, what'd you run over, mate? Morning, fellas. Morning. Uh, happy Tuesday. I uh, I um I used to take my bike out for a spin when I lived up in Woodville, and um used to wear just loose trackies as you do, and yeah. uh, used to keep my phone in my pocket Uh-oh. when I go out for a ride. Yeah. Got home one afternoon and was like, you know, fifteen minutes later, like, where's my phone? And uh, realised it's probably slipped out of my pocket, so I've dumped back on the bike and I've gone back to kind of retrace my steps and saw it on the side of the road and just only the corner of the phone had been cracked so someone had must have oh, wow. hit it and then it just pushed it into the curb so lucky but yeah just I was no, like I was going to say you, Jackson you don't want to retrace your steps too accurately you'll just run it over yourself <laughs> <laughs> yeah that's right yeah just redo the damage yeah and the phone still worked though it was all good yeah, look, this was a couple of phones ago, but yeah, it still worked uh, for a good couple of months before I was due for an upgrade anyway. So yeah, winning there. Happy hey, days. Good on you. Outcome. we got Lance and Woodside. Tell us, what did you run over? Hey, mate. How you doing? Very yeah, good. Good, mate. And yourself? Uh, not bad. It's a bit of a horror story. Okay. Uh, hopped up in the morning to go to work and uh, reversed my car out. Yep. yep. And uh, felt, a little, felt a little slight. Bump and I thought, oh, I'll hop out and have a look. And there's uh, my brother's rock wheeler just laying there. Oh, no. <laughs> wow. Was it? Yeah. It was, a bit, yeah. was he okay? I uh, managed to get into the vet and uh, he had to have half of his intestines sort of untangled and sewn back up. But in the end, it was it all turned out all right. So, hey, geez, that is uh, lucky. Uh, <laughs> it is bloody lucky. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, my brother wasn't too happy with me. Oh, I, I doubt no, he would be. You're uh, taking off dog sitting duties for life. <laughs> hey, Maria over in Glen Gowry, what did you run over? Oh, it wasn't a dog. My God, I'm still thinking about that. Yeah, it could be worse, couldn't it? <laughs> <laughs> Tell us, Maria, what did you run over? It was my husband being incredibly helpful. Um, I'll take the kids to school, all the kids, uh, they're all resting at the house, is everybody ready? Yep. Um, bags are ready? Yep, yep. And the kids have a habit uh, with me because I put all the kids' bags in the booch. Right. Um, and I put them all behind the car, and of course my husband's like, oh, just get in the car, we're running late. Um, and he's chucked the car in reverse and you hear this massive crunch. Yeah. Um, his bank takes out only one of the bags, gratefully, and not the ones with the laptops and the iPads in it. Oh, I see. <laughs> a bunch of that. expensive stuff in Where, there. How was the bag after after being run over? Oh, well, the lunch bag didn't make it. We had to throw that out. The lunch obviously <laughs> didn't make it. Buy, buy your lunch <laughs> today, yeah. kids. Kids would be happy. They get to go to the canteen. <laughs> Good well, on you, Maria. Because all the ones that actually told me to ring you up going, oh, you've got to tell them about Dad ruining my lunchbox. Yeah, it's a great story. <laughs> Good stuff, Maria. Thanks for getting involved. Hey, Shane and Howard Cove, can you wrap it up? What did you run over? Shane? Hey, boys, how you going? Very yeah, good. What did you run over? Uh, it was my phone as well, yeah. I was at a set of traffic lights and I've got to work you and I realised that my side tailgate thing was down so I just jumped out at the set of lights, uh, yeah. shut him up, all good. Pulled out, turned right from the set of lights and my music stopped playing on the Bluetooth and I was like, what is, what's going on here? Uh-oh. And uh, yeah, went back and saw it. Big fat tire tread straight across the front no. of it. So. Was it in any yeah. sort of working condition or absolutely stuffed? It, it, w- it worked enough for me to be able to update it all onto the new phone. So it was, it was, <laughs> the screen was all buggered, but it was enough for me to meander my way through the settings and actually get all my yeah, stuff off it. I, so that was all I needed. I got all my songs off, my memoirs, <laughs> yeah. you know, it was all good. <laughs> 
Mate, I've been pretty cool, calm, collected lately, but it is time for this to come back. I'm bloody ticked off. Simon Mungrel. Oh, jeez, it's ticked off, Tom. Yes. Yeah, I'm, bit, I'm, I'm ticked off. It's uh, it's pretty far and few between. I haven't heard this in a little bit, so this must be a doozy for you to bring it back on the airwaves that you're ticked off. Yeah, well, while we were away, we went to Brisbane and we spent a day at Dreamworld yeah, over there. Yeah, it was good fun. Hadn't been to the world since I was a kid, really, so, mm. yeah, it was great fun. Yeah, so got there and it got to about 1.30 and we're like, well, let's get something to eat, right? Sure. Go have a look at the food stands there. And we did. We went on like a Tuesday, so there wasn't heaps open, but they had like the main sort of food mm. stalls open. Yeah. And I decided I really feel like a hot dog. Got a hot dog, get it, so happy, having the chips, eating a few chips first. Yeah. Go to pick up my dog and the bun has split. <laughs> so my <laughs> hot dog and all the fillings, because I got it with the lot, obviously, mm. have just fallen out of the bottom. I've got two bits of bun and then they're just sausage, bacon, onion and cheese. Yeah, it was pretty funny that we were there. It with, wasn't funny. Uh, you know, you and our other mate and you said, guys, the hot dog buns, it's uh, they're split. And then me and the other mate both looked at ours and we saw that they're in perfect nick, actually. Yeah. So, so it that, was just yours. That, that was the ticked anomaly. me off even more <laughs> that yours were fine. It was just mine that was split. And in my fit of rage seeing red, I just said, I'm going to get something else to eat. I don't want to deal with this. I picked up the hot dog and I threw it in the bin. As I'm walking away, I thought, why did I do that? The chips were good. The throwing, <laughs> yeah, the throwing made a thud as well. I don't want the Fresh fam to, you know, be underplayed by this situation that I wasn't even facing you and I knew you'd thrown the hot dog in the bin. It was that loud. I was like, geez, there's kids around. This guy is a mess. But it gets even worse. So I go to a different food place there they were doing sandwiches they had like this Jamaican chicken roll and Cubano rolls mm. and I thought you beauty one of those looked pretty good I saw one get toasted looked unreal so I'm here I'm, I'm there I'm in the line and I'm behind this family and there's gee I don't know there was a lot of them I'm gonna say like 15 like yeah. I think it was a couple of families that are holidaying together I thought they were shit in the new uh, cheaper by the dozen there was a lot of kids there <laughs> <laughs> one big family and they bought out all of the Jamaican chicken rolls. There weren't many left. There was yeah. maybe like five or six. So there was still a few. But there wasn't like heaps left. And there was quite a lot of the Cubano rolls. I think there was like eight or nine of those left. So I thought, all right, you beauty. I wanted the Cubano roll anyway. And then after five minutes of them still talking, this family ahead of me with the people in front, I see the the lady who's working there grab the sign of the Cubano rolls and turn it mm. over. She's bought the whole lot. Bought the She's shop bought out. the shop out. <laughs> There's people behind me in the line being, what the hell? Who does There's that? another person behind them being, what the hell? There's me being, what the hell? The only option left was a bloody cob, cob loaf. Cob loaf, yeah. And who the hell is doing cob loaf at Dreamworld? Why would I want to ha- have a cob loaf and then go on the claw? Yeah. Are you kidding? <laughs> Tom, there's one thing people do at parties that I can't wrap my head around and it doesn't happen often and if you're not paying attention, you could miss it. It's the Irish goodbye. And for those that don't know, I mean, it's an insane social idea (laughs) that... A few people do. You see it here around the place. It's got many different names. The Irish goodbye, smoke bombing, ghosting. Yep, yep, exactly. It's it's just leaving without saying anything. That's all it is. (laughs) You know, I'm done with this party. (laughs) The social interactions have been exhausting. Get me out of here. Mm. I can't be bothered saying goodbye. So for whatever reason, you just leave. Right. Uh, So I will do an Irish goodbye every now and then. Mm. If If it's like a lot of people around... I'll just say goodbye to the people I'm with and just leave. I won't go around to, you know, 40-odd people and say goodbye to every single yeah, one. Yeah, see, I don't think that's proper Irish. That's uh, that's not the full Irish goodbye. I think Irish goodbye to me is just you walk out the door. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah and often it, often it looks rude, but at the same time, it's one of those weird ones people kind of respect because it's so strange and they think, yeah. how could you do that? Where did Callum go? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> he, left, you, he left an hour ago. You leave with a bit of mystery, <laughs> and that's why I think people do it. But one of the craziest Irish goodbyes I saw was on the weekend – And pretty much where at this party, there's only four of us remaining. So literally four people sitting around having a few drinks in a house about 12.30 at night. One of these girls gets up without saying anything, 
goes to what we think, you know, the bathroom, mm-hmm. but hasn't come out for 20 minutes. Right. We think, where the hell is she? Better go check. Yep, go to the bathroom. Can't find her. I go to the front door. <laughs> Door's wedged open. <laughs> <laughs> she hasn't shut her. And she's done a runner. Right. So done an Irish goodbye, which is the most insane one I've seen because there was only four of us, so then there are three remaining. That seems unnecessary with that little people, especially oh. in an intimate setting where you're all just sitting. You could just be like, oh, guys, are going to go. It's the weirdest <laughs> thing in the world. I think it is so bizarre. And she wouldn't respond to her messages until the next day and she was like, oh, I was just feeling a bit sick. Mm. Wait, wanted to go home. Maybe she was sick of our conversations. Maybe she was <laughs> bored. I don't know. Maybe something offended her. Look, I think we need to get the Fresh Fam's opinion on this one because I think quite a few people do do the Irish goodbye and I mean is it rude is it rude to do the Irish goodbye give us a buzz now 1300 737374 maybe you do the Irish goodbye and uh, you, you can defend it and tell us why it's not rude maybe you've been a victim of the Irish goodbye yeah maybe you're a victim of it but you respect it now and you think you're going to do it next time see I think it's acceptable uh, until there's 20 or plus people I mean if there's 20 people you shouldn't do it mm. right and but you should send a message either way every time. Let's keep it. Let's just keep it simple. Is it is it rude to do the Irish goodbye? Plenty of texts coming through right now. Somebody's texted in saying, "Can't stand Irish goodbyes. They're so rude and make things awkward the next time you see the person who Irish goodbye." Yeah, is yeah. it? I feel well, like you kind of just forget <laughs> about it. Yeah, I don't know if I'd ever sort of backtrack and think, "I know you Irish goodbye." Well, two you're years doing ago. it right now, so. <laughs> Bringing it to live radio. Was, was that your text? Obviously, I do have slight <laughs> resentment, yeah. Uh, this one here. Um, there's, uh, since getting older, I always do the Irish goodbye. If I don't, I end up getting peer pressure to stick around. I think both are as rude as each other, but both need to be done. So that's a big thing as well. They, if you're at the pub with mates, you might get peer pressure to stay. You don't want to stay and have any more beers, so you have to go off. Yeah. Another text here. Rude as hell. I understand you can't say goodbye to everyone at a larger function, but you need to at least say goodbye to some so people know you've left. Yeah, do a few droplets here and there, a few little goodbyes. I love this one here. As an Irish man myself, I'm (laughs) pro-Irish goodbye. Brendan. I want to see how this guy sleuths out of a party. (laughs) Plays this on his phone connects to the Bluetooth. Uh, another text just come through. Not rude if it meets the criteria, plus 15 people. If you have children, as it's hard to juggle the exit with crazy kids, you don't know many people at the event. Yeah, huge one there. A right, few different things coming on there. Hey, let's head over to Woodville. we got uh, Casey on the line here. G'day, Casey. Uh, good morning. Is the Irish goodbye rude? Hey, guys. How you going? Yeah, Very good. good. Yeah, I definitely think it is rude. I mean, especially what happened to you, Callum, it sounds really awkward if it was just a few people and this, like, woman just disappeared into the ether. I mean, come on. <laughs> yes. Casey, have you... Are you saying you've never Irish goodbye then? No, absolutely not. It's so rude. <laughs> but you've seen other people do the Irish goodbye and is there much talk afterwards of, hey, that person's a bit of a jerk? No, I mean, I just personally resent them, um, but I just think that to myself and it just... Um, yeah, makes me feel a bit bad about them afterwards. Casey, don't bottle up those feelings. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, you'll only like hate them more. Deep hate for the Irish goodbye there. Casey, I'm going to I'm gonna set you a challenge, okay? This weekend coming, if you're out with some mates, just give it a go. Try the Irish goodbye, see if you like it. It's going to hurt my soul, but yeah, maybe I'll try giving it a go. <laughs> I, love, I love that Casey is so nice that tries to do the Irish goodbye, then comes back in half an hour. Yeah. Sorry, guys, I was just going to the convenience store. <laughs> yeah. I didn't Irish goodbye you, I, I swear. I couldn't do it. <laughs> <laughs> Hey, Callum, we got to have a chat about alarms, mm. right? So whether I'm having a nap or waking up in the morning for work, I am always setting multiple alarms. Yeah, I mean, alarms dictate your day, especially us early in the morning, particularly mm. you don't want to sleep through, miss the show. Yeah, so for example, waking up this morning, these were my alarms, 5.40, 5.45, 5.50, yeah. 5.53, and an emergency one at 5.58, just There's in case. a lot there, yeah. <laughs> yeah. So... Yeah, you're one of those people that does the multiple back-to-back alarms. Well, typically I'll snooze the first couple, or if I don't snooze the first couple, I'm a I'm a bit of a deep sleeper, so I'll probably sleep through, through one it. or two. Yeah, uh, I think most people do. Like, do you? I never sleep through alarms. I'm such a light sleeper to the point where I don't know how but people do, you, do that. Do you set multiple alarms? I, I think most two. people do that. So I'm pretty right? I'm pretty modest with the alarms. In the morning, mm. I'll do two, and that gets two? me going. All right, how far apart are they? 
like 10 minutes. 10 minutes, okay. Well, yeah, I mean, that that is a good feeling though, isn't it? When you wake up and you're like, oh, I'll rest my eyes for 10 more minutes. That, sure. It's such a euphoric feeling when you're tired in the morning and you just close those eyes and you don't quite go back to sleep. It just feels good. I feel like you're about to doze off here. You're just uh, <laughs> taking you back, back to that better place. I keep closing my eyes. <laughs> <laughs> and yeah, I'm getting close. Uh, but turns out setting these alarms, multiple alarms, might be quite bad for you. Nurse Jordan from TikTok has come out to explain why. The reason is it messes up your REM cycle, mm. which is your rapid eye movement. Yeah. Uh, and that that's basically when your eyes are closed, your eyes dart around quite a bit. And if you're going in and out of sleep, your eyes start to... You know, it's not sure whether to go rapid or normal. Yeah, sure. So you can't fully get into a deep sleep with yeah. those alarms. And, and by disrupting your REM cycle, it can have the following effects like sleep inertia, increased increased drowsiness, fatigue, mood swings, and it can even raise your cortisol levels, which uh, can affect nearly every organ in our bodies. Right, so yeah. So something you really don't want raised. It is one of those that you do hear about the scientists saying sleep is the most important thing, as opposed mm. to anything, diet, exercise, whatever. As long as you get the sleep, that's what you need. Yeah, so Nurse Jordan's solution to combat this and not mess up your REM cycle is simply just set one alarm and get up. Just get up. It seems, I mean... <laughs> It seems like a big ask. I mean, I know there's so many people out there that do have to set the multiple alarms. Yeah. She's just given the blunt force. She's just saying, get up, get over it with it. Well, look, that's Nurse Jordan's solution. That's coming from a medical standpoint, right? But I'm going to give my solution, what I think. And like I said before, I'm a, I'm a deep sleeper. So I do sleep through alarms. I need to set multiple. Otherwise, things could get hairy real quick mm. for me. And if you're the same... All you got to do is set alarms no longer than two minutes apart. No longer than two minutes? Yeah, so you set your alarm, say it's 5.50, the next alarm can't be any longer than... I uh, can't be past 5.52. Well, so you just rush with a stampede of noisy alarms just to get you up. Yeah, I feel so like that would piss me off even more in the morning. Two, they say two minutes is about the, the max amount of time you can do it without before you start to disrupt your REM cycle. Yeah, right, okay. I thought you had another weird solution like, oh, you need to get some birds to carry you out, put your pyjamas <laughs> on, like in the Disney movies. That's the best way to do it. Well, if you can train <laughs> birds to do it, absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> There's heaps of stuff going on with the Olympics, all different things uh, catching the world by a storm in the news there. Yeah, I mean, there's heaps of things that are coming out. We've got that Turkish bloke with the hand in the pocket, mm. one hand shooting, the got silver. suspected assassin yeah. <laughs> who's joined the Olympic ranks, good on him. You've got the, the Italian bloke who's sleeping in a park because he doesn't like the village. Sure. You've also got the pole vaulter who's noggin uh, slapped the pole off. Yep. Yeah. <laughs> so... Plenty of things, but this is a new one to take the world by storm, and I guess it's a bit less comical. It's more of a heartwarming one, but it's got us thinking how this actually works because Tomas Mahach uh, and Katarina Sinikova are two tennis players over there at the moment, and they're mm. doing mixed doubles tennis, and they just won gold. Yeah, for check. Yep, but the interesting thing is... They're broken up, and they used to be in a relationship for about four years. Yeah, well, they broke up like a month ago Literally as well, so it's very fresh. A month ago, yeah. So you can assume, I guess, they started training together maybe when they hooked up. Yeah, maybe even ago. before. Maybe that's how they hooked up. Yeah, yeah. And now they've taken the world and by storm in tennis, and they've given it a red-hot crack, but they've come out the other side, you know, very positive, and it's probably one of the better situations of working with your ex. Well, I've got to say, uh, <laughs> it's like... The, the internet just doesn't seem to care that they've won gold. They're all like, are they going to get back together? Because after they won the gold, they've had a massive embrace. Uh, they're cradling each other. Mm. And everyone's like, if they're not already back together, they're definitely getting back together. Yeah, sure. <laughs> I've even seen there's other news outlets already making the call saying they're together. Yeah. So a few <laughs> right. people have really okay. gambled the stakes <laughs> high and said, no, nah, we're just going to make the call. Let's, uh, let's jump on it now. They're together. But... Like I said, this is probably one of the better examples of working with your ex. I mean, yeah, and like you said before, how how does it work? It is a tough one, isn't it? So we are going to go to the phones here. Is there anyone out there right now that is or has in the past worked with their ex? Because I think this would be so mind-boggling hard. If you were leading up to the Olympics, it's the biggest moment of your life. You're doing all the training mm. and then uh, your ex-girlfriend gets dropped off to the tennis court by some other bloke. <laughs> 
<laughs> and then you think, who the hell is that? So surely there's a few things that would upset you a little bit leading up to it. Yeah. Look, a couple of weeks ago, we talked about do you work with your partner? Quite a few people got around that. But let's go to the opposite end here. Do you work with your ex, Adelaide? Going to go to the text line before we head to the calls. Somebody's texted in here saying, my partner and I worked together for two years. We split and I quit after a week because of the awkward tension. Yeah, you would. See, I think I would split off as well. You'd find another job, but I don't know. It's, I guess uh, it depends how amicable the breakup was. Well, if there's yelling at the office or something, yeah. you, know, you don't want it to be too <laughs> awkward. But it's funny, it worked with my ex for five years. We keep it professional, but I swear she dumps all the crap work on me on purpose. <laughs> Yeah, probably. <laughs> you have to stay behind. <laughs> 7 p.m. finish. Another text here. Works with my ex at the beach house. Lucky I was on top of the water slide. She was at the food stand. Didn't have to see each other. We broke up there too. Hey, two separate worlds. <laughs> Don't have to. Uh, what do you break up over at the beach house as well? I know. I mean, <laughs> Over a game of ski ball? What, what happens? <laughs> <laughs> she beat your high score. You had to end it. <laughs> Another text here. Hi, guys. My ex and I have worked together for 20 years but separated 16 years ago. He's the boss and I'm the employee, but we're best friends and have a great working relationship. There you well, go. It's good to know that there are positive outcomes for that one. Absolutely. And another text here. The physio I go to is run by a married couple. They divorced and still work together for 10 years until the husband retired. Wow. Okay, yeah. That's a, that's a huge one. <laughs> yeah. I mean, going over to the calls, we have Grace and Burnside. Tell us, Grace, did you work with your ex? Uh, hi, what guys. I, yes, it didn't end well. Um, I worked at, like, a shopping centre, and his family owned the shopping centre. So originally he got me the job. Um, he worked there too, and I worked in the deli. So when we broke up, like, he always walks in, and he looks cool, and I'm wearing a hairnet. Um, and so <laughs> I was always trying to avoid him down the different aisles and work out what aisle he's working out. But I ended up winning because I ended up dating someone else. Um, and he had to face us every day. So that's hey, hey, Grace, uh, you're saying the deli was a bad section to work in because he had to wear the hairnet. What section would be the the best section to work in to try and make him jealous? Well, check out because you could like undo the shirt or something. Like deli, I had an eight, <laughs> a yellow apron yeah, on yeah. and hairnet. A lot of people complain <laughs> about the deli outfit. <laughs> it's not that bad, I swear. 